Yeah. Come here, Stormy. Hey, how are you? My name is Jeremy. I'll be reading uh, from this three minute devotion book. Three minute devotion for men, it is called, but it is from inspired by the uh, Word of God. So it is for everybody. It's uh, beneficial for help teaching, counseling, <laughs> rebuking. <laughs> It's bold. It's bold. It tells you what it's like. So that's uh, kind of like the, what the Word of God does. You read the Word of God and know it, or if you forgot some things, scan back through there, or hit some Google searches. You'll be surprised by what it says. Maybe. Possibly. You shouldn't be, though. It uh, should be cl kept close to your heart. So that's why we do devotional stuff, to get a closer relationship with God, devoting time to God and learning about Him and uh, being Him in, in His presence all the time. All right? Not letting uh, sin sneak in or worldly type things ever sneak in or creep into our lives because it'll do that. Uh, the less and less that you are in the body of Christ or uh, are around other believers or isolated yourself, the more uh, sin will sneak in or the enemy or the devil or Satan, El Diablo will sneak in and attack your mind. So be together, <laughs> be together, gather together, be in the Word of God, be in prayer, close relationship with Father God. All right, keep Jesus with you all the time hand in hand hold you right there stormy stormy's gonna read the devotional tonight in cat language hope you can speak cat because i can't the only thing i understand is dad i need more food i'm i'm running out on food and she's got like a quarter left i'm like you're not out of food she's like i want my food this full dad i always see when she goes and i'm like you're saying dad i'm out of food it's funny out of your mind is the title of this devotion. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul. Acts 26, 24. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. Saul of Tarsus, the brilliant Jewish rabbi, had abandoned a promising career to promote the hatred sect he once wanted to destroy. When they heard Paul's story, King Agrippa and the Roman proconsul Festus thought he was insane. Paul stood before them and went on about dead men coming back to life and a heavenly vision, then tried to persuade them to join him. Acts 26. No wonder Festus thought he was crazy and Agrippa was insulted. Others may think great adventures are out of their minds, but men with a vision want to do what others think can't be done. Take journeys others deem impossible, follow the vision others can't see, and take risks others fear. Deep in the heart of every man is an adventurer, a dreamer, and a hero. Like Paul, you long to follow the wild paths of a great vision, and as with Paul, that journey begins as an encounter with the living Christ. Ah, oh, perfect! But don't be surprised if people say you're out of your mind. People, that would be the uh, Jews and the Gentiles, well, whomever, the non-believers. But people should be supportive and say, uh, man, I'm going to pray for you, or you can go and pray about that. But uh, yeah, it's a big vision, and things are put inside of us that we gotta do uh we have to do um yeah it's our gift our gifting we're supposed to be adventurers uh explorers having big vision uh there is one book that's specific about that called uh, wild at heart by john eldridge wild at heart oh man how this christian life and the walk with christ is supposed to be exciting and fun and reach a lot of people we're supposed to be have have fun and peace and joy at the same time and excitement all at the same time with our kids, with our wives, with our moms and dads. It's a really cool exciting life, but there is a big vision, a big plan and purpose God has for our life and we need to be in close relationship with Him to find out what that is, but uh, dying to self, every day dying to self and uh, picking up our cross and following Him every day on whatever He wants us to do, being obedient, right? Cool. So, this is how you might pray about that. God, give me the vision and courage to strike off the beaten path and follow you to great adventures. Give me the courage to ignore the critics and the naysayers. Who's the biggest critic and the biggest naysayer in our life? It is the enemy, those little voices that get together 
and tell you that things are wrong or it just keeps turning, just keeps turning and it won't shut up. That's why I turn up that worship music. Praise God. Turn it up loud. Be in the Word of God. Keep yourself surrounded. So if you see that I do it all the time, it's because I feel like I'm, I'm getting so close to God. I'm doing big things. That's when we get attacked worse. All right? Our mind... Uh, we're going to do big, bold things, and the enemy does not want us to do that because we'll be glorifying God. We'll, we'll have happiness and peace and joy and excitement, and we'll have love. We'll love God, and we'll love others, and we'll be confident, and the enemy does not want none of that. So he's going to tell you. He's going to be those naysayers. And if anybody in their, your life is a, what do we call that, critics and naysayers, be very careful with that, all right? We can give... We can give godly advice, godly wisdom. We, the people can seek counsel, and hopefully we can teach based on what the Word of God says. But anybody that doesn't do that, be very, very careful with that. All right? Cool. That's why we stay in close relationship with God. We know the Word of God. We do devotions and just constantly being in prayer. All right? Constantly meditating on the Word of God, but being in close connection with God. All right? So, like I said, the reason I do it is because doing big things, and I know I'm big, doing big things, I know I've been called to do big things, but the enemy wants to slow that down, all right? Cool, so do not let that happen, all right? Do what you gotta do today, be obedient, and see who you're supposed to see, and do what you're supposed to do, and check that box, because you know you're supposed to do it, so go and do it, all right? Don't put it off, it's already, it's already it's July. It was just New Year's, I mean, we're halfway through the year already, all right? And even though it's been a messed up year, God's still going to be glorified, and Christians here are still going to have excitement, and we're still going to have our peace and our joy, and uh, we're going to grow the most during this time. That's just the way it is, and we're going to be the light, and it's just the way it's going to be. That's how this Christian walk is, because God uses all things, all things. Um, but He loves us so much. He loves us so much that He's always going to take care of us, and that's what faith is all about. It says that. If you know the truths and promises of the Word of God, and uh, yeah, it's incredible. All right, cool. Right now, you might actually have more peace and have more excitement right now and get closer to your family or do better at work or your level of fitness or health is better or you're actually, your, your economy, your finances happen to be better than it usually is. Incredible how that works, right? Cool. You are in Christ, all right? All right, stay in the Word of God, stay in prayer, close relationship with God. Pray for friends and family. Remember when you hit your knees tonight before bed? Pray for somebody. Try to remember, oh, it was somebody that was supposed to pray for. Do it, all right? Cool. Love y'all. Stormy says, Stormy is AWOL. She left. This one must have been boring to her. Pray for Stormy. She needs prayer. I always ask her, what do you want to pray for? She just prays for a full cat food dish and clean water and clean litter box and then I don't jam the music too loud because cat ears happen to be really good or something or is that their eyes I don't know love y'all see ya bye